there's a saying that if a designer comes up with a new chair, his reputation is made for a decade, and if it's comfortable, then it's a bonus. In the history of chair design, major innovation is generally signposted by technical revolution. For instance, the German Bauhaus period of the 1920s heralded new materials forming techniques, such as tubeless steel bending. This was a development of wood bending that Tone pioneered in the mid-19th century in what is probably the most famous chair in the world. In the latter part of the 20th century, Robin Day exploited mass production plastics forming processes in probably the most successful English chair ever made. For the first time, a British manufacturer made a substantial investment in tooling to enable the serial production of a chair that would be very inexpensive. Given a tooling cost of around £50,000, which is certainly in those days was a very substantial investment, it became possible to produce a, a, a seating product that would actually sell at about £3.50. Of course, a century and a half earlier, the Windsor chair whittled away in the beechwood forests around High Wycombe was a true artisan product and its form and shape evolved from necessity. Now chairs have always been my particular woodworking passion, especially rocking chairs, and the challenge of exploring material, technique and form without copying anything that's gone before uh, never ceases to interest me. Ron Arad once said this to me. It's never enough for me to do a chair that's a variation on another chair or just that, that it's a little more elegant than other chairs or I, to do a new chair, you have to have a very good reason to do a new chair. Well, I agree with this. It's easy to place four legs on each corner of a chair and come up with something decorative, but far more difficult to achieve an original structure and form. I've created the brick rock chair using a simple wood brick technique, never used in chair design before, I believe. This chair is a prototype as the ultimate aim is to create a pure cantilever form. This first example was exhibited at the Making the Futures exhibition in London in 2009. I simply run out of time to complete the full cantilever concept. The novel fluted effect not only adds to the visual interest but overcomes the massively time-consuming process of finishing perfectly smooth surfaces as it's done by jigging up a router. Now the idea is that the various brick components are cut on a CNC router. Modern adhesive technology plays an important part in the creation of this chair. Creating a new chair presents a complex variety of technical and aesthetic challenges. Not least it has to be made of the right material and I chose ash for this chair as it combines strength uh, with visual appeal. Getting the comfort right is easy in a chair as you can simply copy the data from an existing comfortable chair, but getting the visuals right is another matter and is the ultimate aim. Well, there's no artifact so fascinating or that evokes such feeling as a chair. And as Tony Kitcher said, The great chair, the greatest chair of all, probably still eludes us. It's out there to be done.